We've now covered Final Cut Pro X's editing environment, how to import files and file management practices. And in the last video, we covered working in the timeline. We're now going to move on to covering Final Cut Pro 10's tools and different types of edits. Let's take a look. It's best to know which tool to use for any given job. So let's take a look at the toolbox and see what each tool does as well as how to access them. So we're gonna go over here and on the light gray bar in the middle of your screen on the far left, you'll find your toolbox. And if you toggle down here, uh, you'll see that you have all the tools there. And right next to them is their keyboard shortcuts. So if you at all ever forget what they are, they're all just listed right there, very easy to find. But it's very key to learn these as you go so that your muscle memory will start to kick in and you will just use them and you'll be able to keep the flow of work going with relative ease. So let's take a look at the very first one, which is your select tool. Now the select tool is your default. You wanna go back to the select tool for any reason when you're not using one of the other tools. It's gonna to be the tool that you're gonna to wanna to use most of the time. And what it is is the arrow shaped pointer that selects items in the timeline. What I can do is I can come up to my clips here and I can grab this clip and grab it and bring it down here with the selection tool and it will insert it wherever I need it to if I wanna edit and put these between clips or stack clips or do just about anything with it, it will do that. So if I'm say trimming this, I can also do that with the select tool. As well, I can select things to delete. And then if I want to do a ripple edit by moving either the incoming clip forward or the outgoing clip backwards, I can do that by hovering between the two right at their cut and I can toggle between the two and you'll see the little film strip move and you can either trim this way if you'd like or you can get your cursor on the other and trim this way if you'd like. That's the select tool and you get there by typing the A key. A for arrow, which is what your select tool looks like. So A for arrow gets you to the select tool. So A, keyboard shortcut A. Now let's take a look at the trim tool. The trim tool is your second tool and we choose it and it can be selected by T. And your select tool will be able to change your edit point by either making the incoming clip longer or the outgoing clip shorter or vice versa. As well, you can use it to slide the portion of the clip that you're using by keeping the same duration, but you're just having a different chunk of that clip being used. And the trim keyboard shortcut is T. So to access this tool is T. So let's go A for arrow or select tool and T for trim. And there it is. Very simple, and if you just wanted to, say you're in your select tool, I just went back to A, and I wanna just hold the T key down, I can use it, and when I let go of the T key, it will go back to the last tool you're using, which was our select tool. Now let's take a look at the position tool. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna take a look, position tool, and that's the letter P. Now, the position tool will make it so that your timeline ignores magnetism. And what that means is that now when I grab something and I move it, it'll actually stop and stay wherever I left it. Now in this case, it put a gap clip between, but if I wanna go back and say I wanna just bring it in here and let go, it will actually trim the clip prior to it. So it'll make it a lot more like other nonlinear editors. If you're bringing clips from your clip browser and bringing it in, it'll do the same and it'll overwrite edit. I'm gonna undo this. And that's the position tool, which is P, keyboard shortcut P. Next, we wanna to go to the range selection tool. So we're gonna come down here and range selection is the keyboard shortcut R. And if you hold down R, it will temporarily choose the range selection if you need. And what the range selection will do is it will highlight a area and it can span across multiple clips. It can be within one clip and it can be a place where you're marking a keyword or giving it a favorite or any other reason for marking and it selects a range. Remember that the R key opens the range selection tool. So if you hold down R coming from any other tool, I'm gonna to press A again to get to my arrow. And if I press R and hold it down, instead of just pressing the key, I can then use it and then when I let go of R, it'll go back to the last tool I was using. Next up is our blade tool. So let's go back up to our toolbox. 
and take a look at the blade tool. Now it looks like a razor blade because that's what it does. It cuts clips and the keyboard shortcut for that is the letter B. So type B and it'll type up blade. And if I say wanted to split this clip into two, I can do that and now it's two clips. So here's something that might happen to you with the blade tool. You cut somewhere you didn't mean to and you wanna undo that by rejoining them and you can of course press Command Z for undo, but you can actually remove that cut a different way. So let's go back to our select tool and that's by pressing the keyboard shortcut A. And if I select this cut here, then if I go up to trim and I go join clips, and now we'll bring those two clips together. But it won't work between two clips that aren't the same clip. So here, yeah, you have a cut point, but you can't go up to trim and join clips. It's not gonna be an option. Only when you split a clip and you wanna rejoin the, the clip together from being two pieces into one. The next tool is the magnifying glass or a zoom tool. And if you press Z, you'll get the zoom tool. And the zoom tool, you can choose a range and it'll zoom in on that range. You can use it just at one point and click and it will zoom in on that area. If you press option and you click, it will zoom out. And then if you want to zoom to fit, you press shift and Z at the same time and it will fit your timeline to your window. And last but not least is the hand. The hand is the editing tool that allows you to scroll through the timeline. So let's go into the toolbox and hand or the letter H. And what it does is I can now move around in the timeline here. If I was closer, if I want to zoom without changing my zoom tool, I can press command plus and minus zooming in and out and it will make it so that I can go at a different place in the timeline and it's not affecting anything. It's just moving me in time. Now let's take a look at the trimming and editing types and the processes that you're gonna be doing this. So you'll wanna know what an append edit is. An append edit is going to always send something to the end of your timeline. If I go up to a clip here and say I have this little scene here, I'm going to mark my in and out points by clicking I and that's gonna be where my cursor is. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna go O for out, and now I have a selected clip. I can then highlight that. If I press the E key, it will send that clip to the end of my sequence. And that's an append edit. Now let's learn about an insert edit. So I'm gonna get rid of this clip here, and the insert edit is gonna insert the clip between two points. So right where the playhead is, it's going to put your whatever you are inserting. So if I can grab this and insert it here, it is an insert edit. As well, I can press the W key and it'll do the same. And as well, if you go up and you press W, it will insert that clip right wherever that playhead is. A helpful tool is snapping during this time. So to turn snapping on, you press the N key and it'll turn on snapping. So that way you're lined up right where you want to when you're going to the middle of an edit. Now let's learn how to do an overwrite edit. Now this is when you want to replace an entire clip or a partial clip or replace multiple clips. So to overwrite, all you have to do is press the D key. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna replace the clip starting at the playhead and going on in time by pressing the D key. I already have a clip selected here, which I used I and O for in and out of points to create the duration of this clip in my clip browser here. And if I just press the D key, it's gonna go from my playhead and it's going to overwrite the clip that is happening from there on in time with the clip I've selected, keeping the selection duration as I created it in the clip browser. And ta-da, press D and there it is. It overwrote the edit. And you can see that the timing of the end clip, so it didn't push the next clip over any, it actually overwrote it. Now, if I'm going to undo that, Command Z. So if I wanted to do a back time overwrite edit, I'd press Shift D and you can see it now uses the back side of the clip that's selected in my clip browser and goes back in time to replace it. So let's undo that and show you one more time. Shift D and it's gonna go back in time from that edit point. And that's an overwrite edit. I'm gonna undo that again. Now let's take a look at replace edit. So replace edit is really simple. You just grab your clip from your clip browser and you drag it over a clip. Now you see that it's got a little film strip with the green plus. If you drag it and you see that and you let go, it gives you options. Now you have replace, which what it'll do is it'll replace that entire clip with the clip that you've selected in your clip browser. And I'm gonna do that. And you can see, there it is, and it got rid of that other clip completely. Now let's try another one, which I'm gonna grab and drag, same thing, same process, till it shows me the green plus. And I'm gonna say, replace from start. So what that's gonna do is, it's gonna actually take my endpoint from my clip browser, and it's going to make that the very first frame, but it's gonna replace this whole clip and keep the duration of that clip in the timeline, but with the clip that I'm using from my clip browser. So I'm gonna go replace from the start, and you'll see now that whole clip is 
longer than I had selected it within my clip browser because it replaced that whole entire clip. Now there's one more option and I'm gonna do undo here and I'm going to do the same thing. Grab my clip from my clip browser, drag it down to the timeline till I see the green plus and the clip that I am replacing is highlighted. I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna go replace from end. And if I do that, it's going to replace it from my out point on my clip and go backward in time, but still replacing that entire clip and keeping the duration that's in the timeline. So let me press that and you'll see there it is. So the out point here is the same out point as here. Lastly, let's cover the precision editor. And the precision editor is going to make it so that you can make the clip longer, keeping the same clip length of one of your clips. It can make it so you change the actual edit point between two clips. And let's take a look at it because it actually is a different looking editor. So if I double click right on my edit point, it brings up the precision editor and you can close it down here pressing this button here. Now I can change the edit point here. So it'll change the outgoing clip length and the incoming clip length. I can undo that, but it ties the edit point or I can move my clip here and make it longer or I can move and make the clip on the outcoming longer. So I'm gonna undo both of those and I can just close the precision editor. So there are your tools and your edit types. In our next segment, we're gonna talk about applying effects.